Hello everybody and welcome back to another Addicted Fishing video. Today we're out here in no man's land hiking this crystal clear mountain creek in search of some trout. I've never been here before, there's going to be a mystery around every corner, but the water's perfect, the day is perfect for fishing, and we're going to go find ourselves hopefully some monster trout. We'll take whatever we can get, but I can't wait. Let's get moving. Stick along with us. It's going to be an awesome day. So I recently just found this little creek on Google Maps. I was just searching through, looking around my local area for a spot that would have some, some water this time of year. It's mid-July, late July, so a lot of the different creeks and rivers around us here have kind of ran out of water, but this one comes off of a mountain near my house, so it still has a good amount of snowpack melting, which gives it enough water to, to hike along like this. So this time of year in the middle of summer, you want to look for a place that has a mountain stream or a glacier-fed river so that there'll still be some water flowing through it. I'm going with the just the normal, the, the normal favorites of mine. I got the Panther Martin, I got some rooster tails with me, I got the Addicted Trout Bobber, and I got the Addicted Micro Worms, which work really, really good this time of year. These fish are a lot of times feeding on bugs or feeding on different stuff that's natural flowing down the river because there's a lot of bugs hatching because it's warm outside. So I got my spinners, I got my Addicted Worms, and I'm just going to hike up this river and fish every single slow moving pool or little fast water riffle that I can find. So this time of year, it's going to really be dependent on deeper spots. So I'm going to keep going until I find deeper pools and we're going to fish every single one of them. Oh goodness, look at this little slice of heaven. Just came up river about a quarter mile or so, and you see this little staircase in this nice deep little pool. I'm gonna start with fishing this one with my bobber here. So I'm gonna cross the creek so I can get a good cast up and in. This is a really clear water creek, so stealth is gonna be of the essence today. We wanna be able to stay behind the hole, stay down river from them, and cast up into them so that we're not spooking these fish before we actually get on top of them and fish them. So let's cross, let's get fishing. So I'm gonna start with my little micro worm here. I like this bubblegum pink color that we have. We have a lot of different colors that come in all our different addicted worm colors. I got a little 30 second ounce jig head, added a couple little split shots with the swivel and then our addicted trout bobber here, which will be coming out to you guys soon enough. Uh, but I'm gonna start from, ooh, I just heard a fish feed right off the edge of the bank there. So I'm gonna start from the bottom of the hole here. One key thing I'm gonna do throughout today is again, not walk to the top of the hole first, especially when I'm fishing the bobber. And I'm probably always gonna start with that micro worm instead of a spinner because it's a little less intrusive of a pattern. It's not gonna scare those fish if they're a little bit spooky. So let's get this thing started. All right. There he is. Oh, it's a big one. Oh, it's a big one. First hole action. Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. He just crushed it. Little, what do you think of that? Yeah, dude. Yeah. First hole action. Uh, this might even be the same fish that I heard feeding on that bank. It's right where he took it. I dang near hit that far side, laid it in there, and look at that thing. What a way to start the day. What a beautiful little rainbow. Absolutely crushed that little thing, man. Oh, that was so cool, everybody. Comment below with what you thought of that. Oh, he's pooping. He's pooping. Ew. You can get a good look at what he's eating in here. Looks like a lot of, a lot of stone flies. Oh, obviously at some point of the year, they stock these little guys in here, which is super cool. That way we're not up here picking on native trout species in the middle of the summertime. But look at that perfect rainbow. Heck yeah. What a way to start the day, everybody. See you later, buddy. Yeah, first hole action. Woo! Let's do it again. That was so perfect. I'd worked my way across. Those first couple of casts that I had made were pretty close on this on this inside, and I was kind of, I could tell I was getting drug into that sand and that gravel here on this, in this close inside to me. So I started making a cast about 10 feet further over towards that wall with each cast. And as I got right over in that little bit bigger structure, a little bit darker water, it was right about there, that thing just drained it. Oh, that might have been another bite, guys. That might have been another bite. Perfect. That definitely was another bite. Oh. Something fishy's going on here. Something fishy. Try to get that thing up and in there a little bit further. Oh, 
fish on, fish on, oh yeah. Oh, as the camera guy falls, oh, he's walking, oh! <laughs> yeah, baby. Oh, that was so cool. That thing tail walked all the way up to the bank, guys. Woo! Oh, man, look at that one. Beautiful little rainbow. Look at the spots along this thing. Just look at that gill plate. That is one of the most beautiful little rainbows I have caught in a long, long time. They got every single flip and color in the rainbow. This looks like a little male. So you can tell a male from a female a lot of times with a trout species by where their maxillary, this is called their maxillary fin, where it is in relation to their eyeball. A female will almost always be right in line with that retina, right in line with the middle of their eyeball where a male has that longer drawn out jawline and it goes back behind the eyeball. So that's how we can tell that guy's a little male. Thank you, little guy. See you later. Fish number two, already. This is gonna be a good day. Ooh, ooh, another bobber down ski. Bobber down ski in the creek ski. Right there, that's the, that is the sweet spot. Didn't go down again. When I can see that, it might be a little tiny bit deep for up top there. I'm gonna slide this down. When I like to make when I like to make adjustments when I'm fishing stuff like this, I do it by bobber length. So that bobber is what, about four, four and a half inches long. So when I make those lengths, whether it's going up or it's going down, I try to only do it those small amounts that I can measure like that, rather than going ree, ree, up and down, you know, foot, foot and a half. I'm gonna go about four inches shallower and throw it back up in there. A lot of time those fish really like to see that thing bouncing off the bottom. It'll make it a little bit slower presentation. It allows him to get an extra look at it. One's following it. Oh, there's one following it. Oh God, he's right there. It wasn't the biggest one in the world, but he followed it all the way down out of the rapids there. This one's gonna get him. Nope, missed him. It was a little too far over. I'm gonna get it back up in there. I fixed my worm here. Got a little, little knocked off center here. Sl Roll that thing back across so it's sitting straight up and down like that. Here we go. There's the spot I wanted. I'm gonna try that far wall again here. There he is, oh baby, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh yeah, -hoo -hoo -hoo. look at him go. This is a mini steelhead, everybody. Oh, how cool. Just tearing me up. This thing is loaded, everybody. This little creek is loaded. First hole of the day, made it about, I don't know, a quarter mile up river, and it, start, it just started to pool out, like I was saying earlier. I was looking for those areas with a little bit deeper water. I'm sure these things are sitting in the fast water, but these deeper pockets are gonna hold the majority of the fish. No, 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 oh, whoa, he's got a mind of his own. Oh, ladles, no. Just an absolute beauty, man. Absolute beauty. Come on, gotcha. It's all right. It's okay. It's, ow, got me. He got me back, everybody. There you go. There it is again. Another absolutely beautiful little stalker trout. Look at that thing. This is going really well, everyone. I love this average size too. A lot of times you find in these little tiny creeks like this, the fish aren't really that big. But today, this is a, we couldn't ask for anything more. The size started big and they've been working a little bit smaller, but already we got a bigger fish than I even thought we were gonna catch today. So this is awesome. Now that I've fished this through here a couple times, I'm gonna make maybe a couple more casts and then I'm gonna grab that spinner and see if I can't find something to bite it. Okay, so I had to retie my leader a little bit there. I was starting to get a little bit frayed. I don't wanna lose a big one, so I had to retie that leader. Always make sure to be checking your leaders after every single time you hook a fish. That can be a fisherman's biggest mistake is getting too excited to get his stuff back in the water, having a little wind knot or a little fray in his line from just landing a fish, and then cast back out and hook the fish of a lifetime and break it off just from being negligent. There we go, I like that cast right there. That's looking good. Come on, baby. Ooh, good drift. Okay, last cast. Okay, second to last cast, because I just heard a fish feed over there on that ledge. Toss that thing right up in there. Oh. 
That was definitely a bite. Something to be said about when you're trout fishing, it's one of the most fun styles of fishing because you really get to use your senses. You gotta use your eyes, you gotta use your ears, you gotta use your nose sometimes, sometimes you gotta smell for them. But really, the, like these last couple of fish, that the first two fish that I caught, I only knew where they were because I heard them feed on that far side. I didn't see them, but I heard that feed. That, it sounds like a little vacuum going off sometimes. I was sitting here, I could hear them just go and come up and slam a little bug. You can see all the bugs floating along the surface over there under that ledge. And that's what led me into my first one. So using your senses while you're doing this, instead of just casting at the water you think will look good, can help you become a better angler. And especially for these like high mountain trout like this that are literally living in here so that because they're feeding on insects and they're feeding on natural prey. And today it definitely paid off. One last cast. Right there. Okay, let's switch back up to the old spinner here. I'm gonna grab my tried and true black and gold Panther Martin here. Let's give it a couple casts before we move to the next hole. Okay, there it is everyone. Old Faithful. So what I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna be fishing this thing almost straight up river to down river. So what it's gonna take is me reeling super fast. I'm gonna have to reel really quick to make sure that I have enough speed and enough and enough tension on my line to get my spinner blade to spin. Oops. And that's what's gonna be important here. If you just let that thing fall down in the current, one, the fish aren't gonna to wanna to bite it, and two, you're gonna end up just getting snagged. Oh, I just got slammed. The main part of it is you just want that blade spinning. It doesn't have to be spinning fast, but it has to be spinning a little bit so that that thing can attract those fish. It gives off those little vibrations, gives off a little bit of sound sometimes, and really it's just reflecting that light off of that blade while it spins. Oh, right at the bank. Dang it. These little things got my number. Here we go, this is the cast. Got him! <laughs> oh, he came off. That fish pushed me down. Woo. Got him, called that one. That's what we call the old Babe Ruth. All right. This hole has been good to us, everybody. I might have found me a new honey hole. What do you think, Little? You think we got a honey hole? Honey hole, honey hole. That was interesting. It took that fish about three different times to actually finally nail that spinner. I cast it in there. First time got hit, second time got hit, third time he finally chased it down and actually grabbed it. And in a different spot each time. I think that thing might have been following it all over as it went through the hole and then he was repositioning himself each time after I missed him. All right, one last cast up into the fast water there. Okay, I think it's time to move on everybody. That hole was good to us. Like I said, it's a mystery around every corner and this mystery was a good one. So you saw, this is the kind of water we're gonna be looking for today. I'm probably gonna fish some of this faster pooly stuff just to see a lot of times that's where you'll find your biggest fish. But I'm gonna keep hiking up this thing. It's gonna be easy to cross. We're just gonna cross back and forth, back and forth till we can't go any further. See if we can't find more spots like this. Let's go. Okay, so came up river, a couple hundred more yards. Come back here, little. You're gonna get him, you're gonna spook him. Found this absolutely beautiful little pool again. This one seems like it has a little bit smaller of a pocket right at the top there. So I'm gonna sneak up the bank, get in position, get that worm right up onto that ledge there. So this one I'm gonna start a little bit shallower, go right to my swivels. I'm gonna sneak up here really close. Not gonna get too close to him. I don't wanna spook him once again. What was that all about? That was definitely a bite. Definitely a bite. So you can see I'm trying to get this thing just up under that ledge. And that, that tree's kind of overhanging, getting in my way. But I want to hit that swirl, let that thing sink down so it can get nice and deep right underneath where those fish are going to be hiding in that little pursuit lane. Darn it, he didn't want it twice. I'm gonna try a little bit closer inside this time on this inside ledge. Right there. Oh, that's the cast. That was the one. Dang. That was the money maker there. Surprised I didn't get one. What's that? Oh, that was a fish. That was a fish. 
making it through about every second cast. I'm not, get, I'm not hitting bottom. I can see my worm down there in that clear water. And I can see it's up off the bottom there. But I can also see some weird little dark figures in there that look like fish. So I'm gonna keep trying. And if I can't get them on this, I'm gonna toss that spinner back in there. I'm gonna go just a tiny bit deeper. Another half bobber length or so. That's the cast right there. That's gonna get the job done. That's the old hum baby right there. Hum babe. Hum babe. Come on. Oh. Six time was not the charm. Okay. Oh, what was that? Guys, something fishy's going on in there. Something fishy is going on. Okay, I'm gonna make one more cast up in there. I'm gonna give him one more chance to eat that thing. And then I'm going with the spinner. Okay, that does it. Old Pinky, she got her chance. Oh, just got smacked. Might just be a really little one in there that's hitting on me. Well, hole number two had nothing but false hopes and dreams, but got a couple bites. I like the consistency. We're finding some fish in every single hole here. Let's keep moving up. So as I was walking up here, I couldn't help but stop and look at this. And you can see how these current lines come through here and there's these tiny little feeder lanes and these deep little dark pockets as they go through these fast water sections. A lot of times I'll find this is where I get some of the biggest and best trout that I catch. Because the fish, especially trout, is all about feeding lanes. They're about sitting in a spot and having as much food come to them as they possibly can with expending as little energy as possible. So this is a spot that I couldn't help but pass up. I had to make a couple casts. But now that I'm looking back at it, the hole we just left is looking even better. I'm gonna make one more cast in there. Just kind of let it sit here in the current. Sometimes just a little change of angles will change the game. Okay, moving on. So I left the camera guy in the dust. Hey everybody, you're way over there now. But I got the GoPro going here. We got this really, really cool, badass little waterfall coming down here. I don't wanna make, make Sean and the dog have to swim across the creek. I don't know how much further we're gonna get up this thing, but I don't care because we got some sexy water right here in front of us. Let's see what's happening. A lot, lot heavier water. So I'm gonna really try to get that thing up and behind those boulders so it actually pauses for a little bit and slows down. I want those fish to be able to see that thing for as long as possible. Keep working this inside current. Oh, there's gotta be one here. This might be a spot for the spinner though. The spinner's gonna get down a lot faster than that worm is in this fast of water here. But let's see. Right there, that's the seam. Oh, not quite. Oh, got him right at the bobber. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was so cool, guys. I actually just got him to start reeling in. I knew if I hit that inside seam like that, we'd get a little action. These fish are just sitting again on those little feeder lanes. They don't want to expend too much energy, and I was, ca I was casting it out into that super fast water, and I think that was just a little bit too much for them. God, they are just loving that addicted worm. Look at that flipping rainbow. You got, that's actually a cutthroat. That's a real native cutthroat. So you see that really, really beautiful red gill that it has right there absolutely beautiful so we found some native fish we found some hatchery fish seems to be all different types of species in this creek but this one here is a western cutthroat you can see that red coloration right there on the gill that's what we call a cutthroat it's got those beautiful beautiful markings looks like another male let's let him go later little buddy yeah everybody oh this is so cool up in here i am just in paradise right now Look at this place. Unbelievable.
Ooh, I'm just gonna let that one sit there for a second. Let it marinate a little bit. Let that thing marinate. Get pulled right out into the current. And I wonder if on that last one, it was, it was right when I went to move it. I just started to reel that thing in and he grabbed it. So maybe that little bit of movement, that little bit of a running away effect that that, that, that worm had when I moved that bobber is what enticed that thing to bite. Those cutthroat are much more of an aggressive fish or, or they're wild, of course. So a lot of times you'll find those things hitting really fast, really hard. And they're a lot easier to catch sometimes than those stalker fish. Okay, I'm gonna try that far side again. Right in there. Right in there, that looks good. That looks good. Gonna give it a little oomph. Okay, well I'm done with the worm now. I'm kinda getting pushed around. I'm not getting a really, really good drift in there. So I'm gonna grab my spinner and give it a try. Man, I just can't get over these rock formations. You guys see all this? These giant cliffs, beautiful trees falling in the river. This thing is very, this, I mean, this river is just the way it's supposed to be. It doesn't necessarily look like it's been over logged. It doesn't look like it's really been torn apart by man so much. But uh, it's just absolutely gorgeous up in here. I can't believe it. Oh, right at the freaking feet. Holy moly. This thing was a. Oh, that was insane. That thing chased it all the way back down to my feet. Oh, right at the freaking feet, holy moly. Oh, I love it, guys. All my favorite techniques are working up in here. There's nothing better than having a day where you get to use your favorite lures and your favorite kind of water and catch your favorite kind of fish. These little trout are definitely not disappointing today. Let's try to hit the same side here, this inside where I caught that last one. Slow it down right through the strike zone. Not a one last cast up in there. I'm gonna move up to the base of this waterfall. Looks like there's about a six to eight foot waterfall just up above me here, just around the corner. So I'm gonna try to scale these rocks, climb on over the side. Part of me wants to try to cross right here and go around. I think I might do that. It's gonna give me a lot better fishing angle on this next hole. Oh yeah, I'm almost gonna to have to. Let's see here. So the thing about crossing these little creeks, you guys, luckily I have cameraman Sean and my dog with me today, but you really, really wanna be selective on where to cross. You don't wanna be stupid and cross in places that are dangerous like I'm doing right now. Danger is like that thing right there. If I slip and fall, the current pulls me in, I can get a foot stuck in that tree, I can get a foot stuck in these big rocks, but I'm feeling pretty good. These rocks aren't too slick today, so I got my, my wader boots on with my studs in them, so it's making it a little easier for me to walk along in this stuff. Okay, I made it. Made it, made it, made it. Look at this. Holy cripes, what an incredible spot. Wow. Let's keep sneaking up here. So I'm gonna go with my spinner to start here. This water looks a little bit too turbulent for uh, for that bobber to work. I can already tell it's probably gonna get sucked under really bad as I throw it into this little eddy line here, but this water's coming down. It's all splashing right here in front of me. I'm gonna try to work these little eddy lines here on the side, see what's happening. Oh, I got hit right away. Oh my God, he nailed it. He nailed it. Oh, these cutties are killing it. Oh man, every spot, every spot, you guys. Oh, that one's got some really cool colors on it. Come on over, little dude. Come to Papa, come to Papa. Man, that thing hit it like he was five pounds if he was an ounce. And he's only about eight ounces. Look at that thing. Another little Western Slope cutthroat. Absolutely marvelous looking fish. I'm gonna get him back in the water real quick while I get this hook out. He ate that one pretty darn good. But that's okay because I trim my barbs. As most of you should if you're out here fishing this kind of water. And there he goes. Thank you, little dude. The whole PM for dinner. Okay, let's get another cast back in there. I have a feeling a lot of times these sort of holes below these waterfalls and stuff like this can be absolutely loaded. Oh, just got whacked. Dang it. Just got whacked. 
that one way back up in there this time. So those foam lines, what you guys are looking at here in front of me, where that, that frothy water is kind of making that big circle, that's another thing you're really gonna to wanna to look for in spots like this, because that's where that food's getting congested. That's where all that stuff is getting pushed into. You're getting a lot of that water flow, pushing all that, all that bug life or whatever's getting pushed over this waterfall into that little spot. So those fish can just sit there and mill around and really, really never have to expend any energy. Let me get one way back up in there this time. Okay, you know, and in the name of science here, I'm gonna grab my bobber and I'm just gonna let it drift around in that eddy here. I can't help it. I don't think I'd be able to sleep tonight if I didn't throw the worm in there for how it's been working today. Okay, here we go. Toss it right up over into that foam line. Just let it drift around in a circle. The key here is not gonna be, is gonna be not being too deep. That thing can sit down there suspended and float around. But we don't wanna just sit on the bottom once it gets kicked into that eddy there. But it looks pretty darn deep over here on this back side right by the rock. I'm just gonna let that thing sit there. Okay, nothing more. Nothing more in there, we hooked them. Fish that one out. Let's keep adventuring. I'm gonna have to hike back down river here. Carry little man across the river, help, help cameraman Sean because I don't think we should stop. Might be hard for a lot of these trout to make it over this waterfall here in front of me, but uh, I'm willing to find out. We're gonna crawl up around this log jam, work around the corner and keep on fishing. What a crazy cool log jam this is. This thing's probably been here forever. Better watch my step though. There could be a hole in between any of this at any moment in time. Oh, good thing I got long legs. They call me long legs Kanigi. Sweet. Look at this place, everyone. Unbelievable. There's cameraman. So cool. Let's keep adventuring. So here we have a little fishing obstacle course. Got this really, really cool little seam over there, but we got a giant tree laying across it. So I'm gonna fish the top end with this bobber, try to get it right in this little seam line. See if I can't pull one out from under the log here. I reel back just in time and not get snagged. I'm really wondering now that we've gone through that big, that big elevation change, you know, I had that probably six foot waterfall that is blocking off this section of river from the rest of it that we've been fishing. I'm wondering how many bigger sized trout are gonna be up here or if they're gonna be even bigger because they have to jump up over that waterfall. So I'm just gonna work every little pocket that I can find up here. We might kind of be fishing ourselves out of water at this point, but it's still worth a try. Man, I gotta tell you everybody, nothing beats this kind of stuff in the summertime. The small creek trout fishing, hiking along, busting a sweat, just using my imagination. I've never ever laid foot on this creek before. So it's super exciting. You can see how much fun I'm having out here. These little addicted fix floats, these little worms, I'm not packing around bait. I'm not making these little trout swallow anything that they shouldn't be eating. And it's just a great way to live. This is an awesome place and I'm super happy you guys are here with us. Thank you so much for sticking around with us today. I'm gonna keep fishing. We might be running out of water here. The river seems to get way more grading as we keep going farther up. So more waterfalls, more fast water pockets, but I'm gonna keep using our methods that are working. Let's see if we can find some more fish. Oh, right at my feet. Yeah. Woo. Oh, he came off. Now that looked like a little bit of a brook trout there. Had a really red belly. I didn't get to see it too closely, but you can see how I was fishing this. It's amazing me how incredibly beautiful and, and clear this water is here today. But what I did is I couldn't get down in this little fast pocket fast enough. So I actually threw my spinner into that little vortex. So it got sucked down deep and I let it just swing across through the strike zone so that I could stay in that hole a little bit longer. That's exactly what I was looking for. Really cool, multi-species now. So we have, we've caught rainbows, we've caught brook trout, and we've caught cutthroat trout. So this is really looking good. So cool little trick for all you addicts out there. See, I got this wind knot that just happened. 
And a lot of times that's because I'm not putting a swivel on my spinner blade here. So it's making me get these little knots in here every now and again as that line twists up. My first trick, if I can't get that by just pulling it, I take that loop and I pull from both ends. That didn't work either. So what I'm seeing here is I got this little bit of a loop, but a good little trick to use is whether you use a side wash hook or just any sort of hook that you have on you, you take that hook, you run it right through the middle of the knot, right through the, the main part of the knot that that braid is created. And this is kind of last resort, last resort situation if you can't get that thing out before you want to cut it. But I'm going to run my hook right through the middle of that knot. It's working. It's working. Come on. And what that does is it actually pulls that knot apart and loosens it up a little bit. Loosen that knot up. See, I got it all the way undone now. I'm going to pull that loop back through. And what do you know? We did it. Got her undone. So it's a free one from me to you. If you get that knot before you cut it, try running a, a hook point right through the middle of that, that knot you have. Maybe even use that hook point to kind of pull it out. And then you don't have to cut your line to get it untangled. So that worked out perfect. Well, everybody, we might have reached the end of the road for going up river here. There's obviously no safe way of getting across any of this. We got some big gnarly rapids, big boulders, too deep to cross right here. One thing I am thinking is maybe I'll walk down and try to cross that log right there and walk up the other side. But I have a feeling we're going to start getting canyoned out here. Seems like every corner we're running into a wall with, a, with another big gradient drop with a lot of white water. So we might just head back down river, keep changing up our presentations. I'll change spinner, I'll change color of worms. But for the time being, let's see if I can do some log walking. Wish me luck. Made it. Okay, so I'm gonna try to scamper up along the bank here get up and around the corner, maybe fish that last pocket, see what's around the corner, but everybody say bye-bye to Uncle Sean and, and Little over there. I'm gonna go off on my own here for a minute and see if we can't find us another pool of fish. So you guys are already starting to see, we're starting to get into much more of a boulder garden type of river here. It's gonna be a lot harder to fish, a lot faster water. And honestly, once again, now that I saw that little brook trout that we just hooked into with the spinner, I'm guessing a lot of those rainbows and those cutthroat that live in the bottom ends of this river system aren't gonna be able to make it this far up over that waterfall. Those brook trout will live up here their whole lives. That's why they're a little bit smaller at times. So let's make a couple casts into here. This looks kind of cool. Again, a little bit too fast for my bobber and worm. So I'm gonna go with the spinner. And it looks like as we keep going up here, it just keeps getting more and more turbulent, more and more rocky and rolly and not quite as fishy for what we got planned here today. Just kidding, something just followed me out. What was that? Oh, got him, got him, I, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Oh, he nailed it. What do we got here? What do we got here? Oh, it's, a, it's a brookie, it's a little brookie. Holy smokes, how beautiful. Look at how incredible this little guy is. The colors are absolutely magical on these fish, you guys. Let me get him back right away. Yeah! God, that is so cool. Man, that was neat. Just working these little inside seams here. What I'm guessing is because of how hard it is to get up in here, a lot of these fish really don't get fished for very often. I think that's why they're so darn aggressive. And they're eating these big spinners like this because normally these things are just surviving off of little insects, little little crustaceans, little things floating down the river. Let's go try right at the base of this little pool here. I don't know how this one's gonna work, but it just might work. Really interesting little spot. Normally it'd be way too turbulent for any fish to be in it, but heck for how good fishing is, I might as well try. Let's see how absolutely beautiful, clear this water is, you guys. Got this just frothy white foam coming through here. Never seen anything like it. I feel like I'm in the, the backwoods of the mountains of the Sierra Nevadas, but in all reality, we're on the West Coast in the Cascades chasing beautiful trout. What an unbelievable day. Okay, let's go one more in there. That, that looks like it's worth one more. I'm gonna let it sink a little further though to get that moving. 
All right, I'm gonna scamper up this log jam, see if we can't find one more hole. Got a pretty neat little pocket over here. Anyone home? No. I'm gonna toss one right over the base of that ball. Right there, perfect cast. Nobody home. Well, as you see everybody, we're kind of running out of good water. It's getting to be pretty much what I would call treacherous wading. We don't want to be doing anything stupid up here again. There's two of us. If you were ever doing this stuff alone, you guys, I'm going to say it again. Make sure somebody knows where you're going. And make sure you know where you're going and have an exit plan for a place like this because this is honestly is about as dangerous a fishing as it comes. And that might sound funny, but we're hiking around very slick rocks, very fast water. The water is just high enough to actually hurt you if you slipped and fell, fell into a leg entrapment or into a nasty part of the river. I mean, look, look at this. Look down the river here and look at how gnarly some of this stuff is. So. Just be prepared when you come into stuff like this. Make sure you're not doing anything silly and putting yourself in a bad situation. So we're gonna start working our way out. I'm gonna change up a couple of rigs and I'm gonna try the last couple of holes we did really well in with some different colors, with some different styles of worms and stuff. But it's been an incredible day so far. Let's see if we can mark a couple more fish on the card and then get out of here. Oh, what is this? No way. No way, look at this, you guys. Look at this. This is like a, a piece of petrified wood kind of been caps and trapped inside some of the sediment that it came out of. We're at the base of, you know, a, a big mountain range here in the Northwest. And uh, a lot of times you'll find these areas where there was these giant landslides, prehistoric, and these giant eruptions or different things that made these giant mud flows that traps all of these rocks and these different trees into the ground and then become petrified over thousands and thousands of years but i thought this was just a normal piece of wood but look at that you can see the grains you can see all the different colors and then you can see how it's just completely solidified into the edge of that that clay or that that sediment that rolled down the mountain here so so flipping cool what a perfect day we got rocks we got fish we got adventure this couldn't get any better <laughs> okay, we're back down at the slam bam. Thank you, ma'am hole for one last hoorah. We're just gonna stick with little pinky. I said I was gonna change, but I lied to you guys. We're gonna see if there, there's some biting fish in here again. Well, she didn't put out on the last one, but guys, what an epic adventure together today. Fishing somewhere new. You guys are along for the ride the whole time and I really appreciate it. We couldn't make these videos unless it was for you awesome addicts out there who watched them. And if it wasn't for you sharing them out there to your friends and family and people that love to come out here and do this kind of stuff. And even if they don't, let's show them another way of life. Let's show them a great way to go out and enjoy the outdoors, respect them in the nature and have fun. Today was an absolutely amazing adventure. I'm so glad you guys were here with me. If you guys wanna see more awesome videos just like this one, go up here and click this link to this other trout fishing video. If you haven't already, go down here, hit subscribe, turn your bell on, give this video a thumbs up, please, to get it out there and comment below and interact with the video and you can be comment of the day just like this guy right here. Thank you so much, you guys. You stay fishy and we'll see you out there.